Hi, I'm Ryan Hagerman. I'm responding to the critical discourse in art and disability. Um, I really enjoyed the talk around uh, the photo soldier. Um, I think those photos are uh, really powerful and very emotionally grabbing. Um, and I think, I think they're interesting because they present, the way the soldiers are postured uh, presents, like makes you think that they could be dead or could be alive and that verge of being in between is really interesting. Um, so yeah, I just really enjoyed the talk on that one. Did you Thank think you. it was from a uh, disability perspective when you first thought of it? Um, it? In some ways, because it brings up the thousand yard stare or the whatever that is, but um, it certainly is like the uh, certain effects that we have kind of normalized, like soldiers returning home and having PTSD. We've almost normalized those aspects, but it certainly exists on the spectrum of disabilities and how um, some parts of the disabilities are normalized and others are still others, if that makes sense. I'm responding to the discourse on the arts and disability, is that right? right. Arts and disability, and um, hmm. I was just touched by the whole panel, how they came together and worked together with their disability and how they talked about everything. Each piece blew me away, but just watching them communicate, put on a presentation, and talk about the whole thing as a whole was really impressive. I really loved it. It's artwork like The Distance Between Us that brings up those necessary conversations about the relationships that people have within the community, how they're accepted if, they have a, if they're a person with disability, whether they have a voice or not, and how the people who love them most are affected. And if we don't talk about those things, then we allow people with disabilities to continue to be invisible in our community. And I think that it's these types of works that will help us change perceptions so that we can understand difference in a way that is healthier. I walked in late about the disability talk um, and I saw some images on the screen, um, images of art about, the, about disability um, and I don't know fully what I think about um, the images about disability but um, one of the gentlemen on the stage talked about how he feels conflicted about art, um, about that deals with the guilt related to um, disability, and I don't, um, I don't have a lot of contact of with disability um, in my life. But when I saw the images that they were talking about, um, I realized like I wanted to see these images. Um, that I haven't seen yet, um, and my first thought was like, "Well, where can like where are they so I can go see them now?" Um, especially the um, images relating to the procedure, and I, I'm like, "What's this procedure?" Because I don't know anything about it, so I have this interest in wanting to go see it and learn more about it. So. Um, my response is to the 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 clerical discord. What? Critical. Critical discourse uh, uh, for art and disability, and I just think it was such a wonderful panel to to bring awareness of a lot of these difficult uh, topics that we don't often talk about. So I was really glad that this was brought up, and and it, it starts to create a conversation about um, art and accessibility. And I think uh, art should be accessible for everyone, and and I think that's. That's why I really enjoy this this panel. Was there a specific statement that they made that really stuck out to you at all? Uh, no, I think just overall the learning from different perspectives, their their point of view, and talking about the different uh, pieces that they found intriguing as as touching the the power of disability. My name is Siobhan Johnson. I did the art and disability. Um, presentation today I went to it I really really enjoyed it um, especially the part where they were talking about the photo series and just about um, how sad it was and sort of um, the ideas of objectification as opposed to being able to be responsible for your own image especially when it's talking about disability 
um, I only saw the first picture in the series, so when the guy was um, holding his lighter. So that was the only image I saw, and I really thought it was great. I didn't know the man was disabled, and I just thought, he's really being cool and having fun, and this looks like a great picture. So the rest of the images were kind of depressing to me, but um, I really, en I just really enjoyed it. I knew I was going to, so that's why I came, but um, it was just a lot of different opinions about disability, and um, just when, I'm forgetting his name, but he jumped into the pool with the, um, he was on the panel today, but I really enjoyed it and thought it was just a great um, way to celebrate Art Prize. Definitely my perspective has been um, greatly um, uh, broadened for this year's Art Prize. Um, that um, you know wandered through last weekend a little bit during the week um, and um, I'll just say that greatly intrigued by the number of pieces that I went by too fast and wanting to go back and see um, additional items um, or, or diff additional pieces of art um, and to say that in talking with the folks that are in charge of the dis art next April, wanting to have more of this kind of stuff before the show so as to be ready when the show comes and to really be able to have that conversation with each other and with the art. Is there like a specific piece that you would like to go back to? Um, hmm. Which one would I like to go back to? I was greatly intrigued by the one with the woman um, putting her arm into the prosthetic. And there, um, I, I had a very different perspective on it where disability is a choice and she was choosing to put her disability on and where Chris and Petra and Neil, um, while they sit in their wheelchair, they don't choose to put disability on, they choose to put their abilities on. And so I, I found the piece kind of sad where she was contorting herself to be ready for the day. Um, and leading with her disability instead of her abilities. So I would like to, to see it in person, not just on screen. So I really uh, wanted to respond to the piece, um, I guess it's a series of pieces um, of the photographs underwater and um, how in some of, in, in light of the conversation about um, people of um, with disabilities, um, I have a hard time saying that only because I feel like we shouldn't make those distinctions. But anyway, um, you couldn't really tell. You know, they were they could be just anyone in a lot of those photos, and the freedom and the happiness, and then the depth um, of uh, the freedom first of um, of the confines of the. Um, air world, I guess, frees them up to be able to not have the confines maybe of any physical challenges that they might have other than breathing, which we all have underwater. So it was like this great equalizer. And then the beauty of um, being, the pictures being taken from under the water um, up at them. And um, so I don't know, it just was, it struck me. Um, just deeply as, as being very beautiful and inviting um, and opening and equalizing all at the same time. So, that's it. I am here on behalf of DisArt. I am the photographer and fashion lead for it. And an interesting part of the discussion was how most of the public view is negative towards disability and I wasn't born disabled so I have uh, a very different view on disability and I there are some aspects that aren't so glamorous but I do enjoy some of the perks uh, the parking the ability to stare at people as long as I want. I also uh, run people off the sidewalk sometimes it's for fun and I get a lot of free drinks 
which is definite plus. So I just, I don't know, there are some cool, interesting aspects of being disabled so that people don't realize or think. So it's not all so bad. Yeah, um, the piece that I found interesting was um, the Christopher and and Nick. Um, they they have a very unique, interesting relationship that a lot of people don't get. Um, you know, they have a very intimate brother relationship on you know a caretaker and and um, someone that is cared for um, and part of the story is how one is trying to fix himself but I'm you know they wouldn't have that strong relationship if it wasn't for Nick's disability so it that's kind of a double-edged sword I guess